Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Gravity Circuit. In the last part we started off the game and got through the intro stage, and now whenever you load in your save file you actually teleport in. But we also got this guy here now. Ah, great to see you in good shape, Master Kai, sir. Master? Oh, well look, I've always been itching to see you in action. I've heard some stories, but I'm sure they don't compare to the real thing. So I've decided to become your chronicler, Master Kai, sir. My chronicler? Yes! I will diligently follow your progress, and see how many great challenges I can cross off my list. Wait, challenges? What list are you even talking about? Oh, uh, nothing special, really. I may have made a few rumors about you, and, you know, I'm just trying to prove that you are the real deal. Here, let me show the list of challenges for you. So, Pat is the in-game achievement menu. You can see the achievements you're missing, potentially get hints on how to get them in the case they are ones that are pretty simple, but otherwise it's largely just a list of achievements so you can see them without having to go to the OS level in the case you're playing on a system that actually has them. For now, though, it's time for us to go tackle our first dribble circuit. You can do them in any order, but I tend to start with the Steelworks up on the top left for reasons I'll go into. We've noticed suspicious activity at a nearby hopper metal processing plant. It seems that the place has been overtaken by the virus army. What's worse, it seems like someone has planted some dangerous beam traps. This seems like something the rebel circuit Ray could do. If we don't do anything, the various equipment might overheat or even explode. So, go out there and stop Ray from blowing the place sky high. Otherwise, we would need some pretty tall ladders to reach it. Take on this mission? Very well, prepare for transfer. for our first proper stage. Now the reason I tend to go for the Steelworks first is actually because I think its hazards are easy enough to get around while still being interesting to get through because we got a lot of lava to jump over, we got uh, robots that'll shoot lava down not towards the floor, we got boxes that'll self-destruct when they hit them destroying anything around them, and we also have beam traps that are pretty much weaker variants of force beams from Mega Man. Uh, I'll talk more about those when we actually see them, though. The lava in this game is not insta-kill. In fact, by and large, insta-kill things don't exist in Gravity Circuit with the base difficulty options without some modifiers applied. Uh, hazards do do damage, but they largely just do this. They'll send you back to the previous platform you stood on that was solid ground. That does mean you can lose some progress, and some pretty hefty progress at that, in some longer platforming sections, but... Not too much to worry about, otherwise we gotta look around for effectively Shovel Knight styled cracked walls and all that because in order to get a lot of this game's secrets, you need to find those. In fact, here's one such right here, this is the palette chip for this stage, we can now take this back to Prim and get a new color scheme and a new ability alongside it. And the reason I start with the Steelworks is because that happens to be my favorite palette chip in the game for the ability it gives us. So the stage select, you can, have, you can select every single stage in any order of course. But some things to note about it, I believe last time I mentioned it does actually show all eight, uh, hostages on the menu there. It doesn't show where they are, though. Uh, it only shows the amount you've collected out of the total, and I think if you skip one, it'll actively skip over that one in the list of eight. So, say you collected one through five and seven and eight, it, number six would not be highlighted. But also worth noting, on the bottom of the stage select screen, there's two bars. Map and power. Those are sort of difficulty indicators for the stage in question. Uh, the power meter indicates roughly how dangerous the boss fight and I believe the enemies are, whereas the map generally highlights uh, the difficulty of the stage itself, whether or not it's a very dangerous stage, uh, whether or not there's a lot of stuff to look out for, or if it's relatively, not to say by the numbers, but a little safer to venture through and let be a little reckless in it. Keeping that in mind can actually make your first playthrough, I'd say, a lot more forgiving. Uh, with that said, it's very easy to overlook it, as it's at the bottom of the UI in the stage select, and you're probably not going to be looking there, you're going to be looking at the faces of the Rebel Circuits. So here we are, we've effectively reached Force Beams from Quick Man Stage. The way these work, you walk into them, they fire off. Thankfully, they're not instant kill, I think they do a, just a couple of pips of damage, and that's about it. But if you're super reckless in this game and taking damage constantly, you will just constantly drain your health super quickly, so watch out for that. Uh, while it's a game that's very much meant for going fast in, uh, due to the way the momentum works, especially with the grappling hook, on your first playthrough, don't fall into that trap. Take your time and analyze the level design carefully, otherwise you will take just absurd amounts of excess damage. 
So the hostages, uh, there's eight per stage, like we said. Uh, one of them per stage will actually become an NPC that gets added to the main hub when we revisit it. Uh, and that's another character we can get a data disc for. But something to note, like I mentioned earlier, if you miss one, I believe they highlight which one you missed on the stage select. But when the game launched, if you wanted to go and get that hostage then, you had to play through the entire stage over again. In one of the updates, I think it was like version 1.1x or something like that, they actively added in a sub-menu to the stage select when you reselect a stage you've already beaten that allows you to either play the stage from the start and also re-get the level clear rewards in the case you're trying to clear all the pars on a stage. You can do that without having to do a new game plus. Or you can just skip to one of the game's checkpoints in the stage and go from there. And if you're trying to get all the items in a stage, like say you missed a pallet chip, a uh, data disc you're looking for for an enemy, or especially a hostage, that is your best friend. Now, worth noting, you may have seen I've been beating enemies shitless to begin with, but whenever I beat an enemy, they glow gray first, then red. When an enemy is gray, they are defeated, and that's when you can grab them with your grappling hooks and use them as a projectile. But when they are red, they're about to explode no matter what. I think there's certain bonuses that you get for that, like you might get more money out of it or something. In the future, you'll probably uh, check mark that for me, because I think that might just be me making that up potentially. But it's worth keeping that in mind, as there's times where you might just want to beat up an enemy and beat it senselessly, and then just be fine. But if you see a lot of other enemies nearby, like especially these capsule guys that have a lot of health, you might want to actually grab a smaller enemy and use them as a projectile to do a lot of damage. Because I think the damage a thrown enemy does is constant, no matter what size it is. And you can really use that to your advantage in a lot of cases. With that said, something I should note about the combat, and there's a way to actually gauge this in the game itself we'll talk about later on. The game has a combo system. You can just mash fire the punch button and you'll keep going no matter what. The only limit for a lot of your attacks is whether or not they use burst energy and if you have any leftover. But there is an invisible combo system in the game that mostly comes into play during boss fights where... Say a given attack has a revenge value of 1. If you reach a revenge value of 15 in a combo... Uh, the boss will get invincibility frames and jump away and be able to attack and escape your combo effectively. But if you're good about pacing out your attacks and letting them calm down a bit first, because the meter does go down over time. You can keep the combo going very relentlessly. And a good reason for why you might want to use certain uh, burst attacks over others actively comes down to, while they might do less damage, their combo value is better overall. And while there's more toolkit with the amount of abilities we get here, that might sound familiar to certain subsets of Mega Man fans. That's because it's very similar to the combo system that's present in the Zero and ZX games, specifically very much more in Zero, Three, and Four than a lot of the other ones. Uh, in fact, if there's anything I can say, if you really like especially the later Zero games, you are going to love how this game feels, because not only is it a similar level of sharpness and control, but the boss fights hit that same note of intensity that is in Classic and X, yes, but with the amount of combo options you have, it hits specifically that note. Uh, which, as a person whose second favorite Mega Man game of all time is 0-3, that's a good note to have. Uh, with that said, going back a few minutes, I jump kicked to the floor and went through a giant beam laser room, and we ended up getting this weird little box that had a plus on it. That's a power-up for Kai's stats. There's one of those hidden in every stage. Uh, half of them are health, half of them increase your burst gauge limit. So you can use more burst attacks in a row. Those are the things you really want to get in the case you're just playing through. Health ups are very helpful, they increase your health by four each time. But they're not exactly as necessary in the case you're trying to get really into the combat of it. Plus, if you're going for certain achievements, you don't want to collect some of them to begin with on certain playthroughs, as there are achievements in this game that are like... Don't collect any of the main power-ups and stages, but I'll talk more about those down the line because I will read off the achievement list. For right now, though, whenever you see this particular type of setup where you see a gray door on the right, you're at the boss fight, but you always want to be careful because they tend to hide one last thing right before the boss fight, usually one of the last hostages. Uh, keep that in mind. Some of the cracks in the walls for you to break are a little hard to spot, though, I will not lie. With that said, let's go after our first major boss fight. Let's go see what Ray's all about. You're right on time. I like a punctual opponent. Ray, this is not a race. Innocent bots are in danger. Hmm. And why should I care? A circuit should command the weak, not fight for them. In spite of your speed, you've gotten soft, Kai. 
Show me that your gears haven't lost their teeth, too. Ray might seem bulky, but he is fast. He can fire a flamethrower out of his wrist, and he can also hit those fireballs from a distance. He can use his lasers to hover off the ground and do damage that way, and he can also do it diagonally to try and get a backwards jump. His main attack you're going to see a lot is him using the intersections of the background to spawn in plates that will then reflect the lasers towards those directions. However, every boss fight at the halfway point in their health also has their own burst technique. In the case of Ray, it's the burning laser. way that works, they'll jump towards a wall, and they'll then get blasted by a gigantic laser out of their shoulder cannons towards the opposite wall. You want to stay behind them at all times while they're doing that, otherwise you're going to take big damage from him. <laughs> good. Very good. However, your fight isn't quite over yet. You better prepare yourself. <laughs> Ray's stage makes for a perfect first choice in my eyes, as the abilities you get here are really good. The hazards are pretty slow and easy to follow along in case you're having trouble with the platforming, and the boss fight itself, while fast, makes for a pretty easy one in my eyes overall. Transmission received. Secure the circuit in the vault. Yes, sir. Good work out there. That should keep the furnaces from overheating. Could have used some of that extra heat to warm up my office. Oh well. Let me know when you're ready to tackle the next mission. But before we do that, let's head in here and talk to the guard we just saw. In fact, there's two in here. Oh, uh, beg my pardon, sir. I'm on guard duty here. Can't really afford to talk at the moment. All right, I'll take a character disc. Hmm. The uh, help? Who goes there? Oh, beg my pardon, sir. It took me a moment to recognize you. It's been a while since I've seen you in person. I'm under direct orders from Colonel to stop anyone who might try to touch the circuit stored here. But I think I can make an exception for you, right? Now, if you don't mind me, go take a nap, robot. You earned it. So, before we go after our next stage, we actually have some people to go talk to because we got a pallet chip for Prim. Say, do you see that road fellow over there? I swear, he has the most peculiar paint job of us all. He tries to keep it hidden under that cape of his, but... I can tell his chassis is severely discolored. I wonder how he ended up like that. Eh, but never mind that. Is that what I think it is? How wonderful! You found yourself a pallet chip. If you'd like, I could use its contents to give your armor a new coat of paint. Who knows? Maybe a change of colors might even inspire new abilities within you. Of course, these paints aren't cheap to mix. So I expect some compensation. What shall it be? So we already start with the heroic red, which actually makes your burst energy more effective when you collect it, but I like hot-headed red. Mix this armor. Thank you kindly, we stand still for a moment. So that changes us to a pale red, but if you now hold down the attack button when you do a dive kick downwards, you fire a laser. That is very good for extending your jump. Ah, you've been busy. I heard you confronted the optic circuit. Ray always was a bit of a hard-headed type, valuing punctuality above all else. By his own mission, he wanted to lead the other circuits, but because of his short fuse, the others never gave him that chance. Even then, it was hard to argue with his results. All projects under his command were always on time. That's more than what can be said for the others. Oh, I think that's enough reminiscing about the past. Care to take a look at my wares? The burst techniques gotten for beating Ray are some of my favorites, but particularly the burning laser one, because it's a giant beam that has heavy knockback that can just melt through larger enemies, and especially through boss health. It does pretty quickly trigger the combo cooldown, but it's so worth it in my eyes. But now we also have some rescue tokens. You get one rescue token for every hostage you save within a stage. Which ones you get here, I'd say, should depend on what kind of playstyle you like to go for. I'm going for a super fast and aggressive playstyle. Uh, especially with the Overflow Converter and the Chain Dasher is what I get here. The Overflow Converter, if you have a full burst gauge and you collect burst energy, it'll then convert into health. Whereas the Chain Dasher, 
If you grapple an enemy, it does damage. But now if we grapple an enemy and it doesn't stun them, we will get pulled into them, which will then do more damage. And then we can quickly follow up with more attacks. Hey, the chamber's fragile. We can't help those in need if you break it. All right. That particular chain dashing thing is really good for melting through enemy and boss health. Ah, so good to get away from those beam traps Optic Circuit had laid down. It was like the Optic Circuit was trying to make us run laps around the place. Nothing wrong with making sure your servos are in working order, but there's a limit to everything, yeah. Instead, we could all learn a bit from the Wave Circuit's example. Although she was in charge of communications around here, she always had a playful, relaxed flair to her manners. And that's the sort of attitude I like to get behind. Such a shame things have to be the way they are now. There's actually a character disc we can get there, but I don't get it for a while. Ah, a gravity circuit, sir. Thank you for the save earlier, sir. Without your help, I'm not sure if I could have evacuated those bots safely. So for that, I salute you, sir. And give you a character disc. Mmm, delicious. Information. Mmm, goodbye, Rasami. You showed up again. Mm, that's most troubling. Perhaps if I dig into our data archives, no matter how scattered our records might be, I might be able to find a clue or two about their origins. Good luck with that. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part three, we're going to go after our next Rebel Sturdicate, as, frankly, most of this LP is one stage per video, as the stages in this game can get pretty lengthy. See you guys, then.